Hallelujah. Don't get excited. It's still some day left. God still got a still chance to do some amazing things. Amen. It ain't over yet. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all walk with me for about 20 minutes. Come on. Can you just can you just work with me for about 20 minutes? Y'all yeah. come on. Come on. Find yeah. some more. Find your mojo Don't for about show. 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For about 20 minutes. God. So let's pray real quick. Father God, we just thank you for this time. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word, God, that declares that those that refresh others shall be refreshed in the name of Jesus. So I release a refreshing right now in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, every uh, thing that may be hindering us from entering into your presence right now, oh God. We loose it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that this word should not fall to the ground, but it shall do what you set it out to do in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, O oh God, that every heart is open to receive what you're saying and you're doing in this season, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you just for a sound mind right now. Lord God, we take authority over every thought that doesn't line up with your word right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we receive your peace right now in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you and we bless you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I'm excited on this evening. Y'all excited? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, so um, I know over the last few weeks we've been talking about, um, like, I reckon our theme this year has been the, the year of impact. So, uh, we've been talking about impact and living a life of impact over the last few weeks. So I'm going to continue to talk about that. I had a subtopic tonight. It's going to be um, get get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes, God. Because in a, in, in, a, in a season or in a living a life of impact, it will cause you to be uncomfortable sometimes. It would challenge your, your ideologies. It would challenge some of the things that you believe. It would challenge you when you're going to the next level. Mm -hmm. We've been talking, and, and as I heard in prayer, we've been talking about transition, transition. And in transition, sometimes it can be very uncomfortable going in a season of transition. When you're going to that next level, it's always going to be a place of being uncomfortable. Because God is stretching you, shaping you, Stretch. and molding you. And a lot of times, that's very uncomfortable. Yes, God. Very uncomfortable. So tonight, I'm going to be coming from the book of Joshua. Familiar book. I know you guys are very familiar with it. I'm going to start with verse 1. So Joshua 1. I'm going to read a little bit. I'm going to give you guys the scripture. So Joshua 1, starting at verse 1. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord, uh, after the, the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you're Will you set your feet as I promised Moses? Now, the thing about this, you guys know that Moses was a great prophet. He was a prophet like no other. God said he was a prophet like no other because he spoke to Moses face to face. Yes. And Moses was a great leader. He was a great uh, mentor to Joshua. And sometimes that can be very, very comfortable. You got somebody you following. They giving you directions. They doing all these things. And when that person or something that you depended on is not there anymore, and you got to step out and do what you do, God taps you on the shoulder and says, now it's your time to go to the next level. That can be a very uncomfortable situation. Yeah, but yeah. God said that everywhere that your feet sh treads, I have given I you victory that. in that place. Yeah, so if right, God right. said it, then it's so. Yeah. Even though it can be a time of being uncomfortable in a time and a season of transition, if God said it, then it's so. It is so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he said it, then it's so. It says your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the uh, Euphrates, all the Hittite country. To the Mediterranean Sea in the West, no one will be able to stand against you. 
I need you. I, I want you guys to read that. Read that part right there with me. It says, "No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life." So, 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 listen to that. So, so we, so we can't say people are stopping us anymore. All right, all right. We, 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 we can throw that excuse out. Hey, nobody stops you because. He said that no one will able be able to stand against you. Mm. So we can't blame it on our boss. We can't blame it on our peers. We can't blame it on nobody. If we don't receive it, that's because we stop us. We can't, stop. Nobody, yes. can't nobody stop us yeah. from doing what God called us to do. Especially when he just made us a promise and said, everywhere you go, you have victory in that place. Mm. Mm. We're talking about some next level stuff. They're going to cause you to be very uncomfortable. Mm, wow. So he says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Now here's the promise right here. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I mean, I mean, like, imagine that you got God walking by your side, somebody who has never lost a fight, somebody who's omnipotent, meaning he's all powerful. He's omniscient, meaning he's all knowing. Mm -hmm. He's all seeing. Mm -hmm. Sees the beginning from the end. So if you have somebody like that walking with you, then what 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 can mere man do to you? What can situations do to you? Because God has already seen the situation from the beginning to the end. So you got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because God said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes you got to walk into the, you got to walk in that skid. You got to walk in there. You got to walk in there like you own the place. I seen, I seen this saying one time. It said that um, you got you to gotta walk in like the lie, but fight like David. You know how David, I mean, Goliath, Goliath walked around for 40 days and 40 nights, just turned just like, like he was the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but David was the man of war who could fight. So sometimes you just got to walk in a situation like you meant to be there. I, 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 I used to uh, walk in places a lot of times and, and people, I train, you know, we go into offices and stuff like that. And you, you know how you could tell if you just walking out with timid and stuff, they ask you like, you, you lost, you need some help. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But you could, I guarantee you, I said, walk, walk in there and just look straight. Don't even look around. Just walk in there straight. Won't nobody say that to you. You, you got to act like you belong in that situation. You got to act like whatever God promised you, it belongs to you before you even have it in your hand. You got to act like it belongs to you because it's yours. It's yours. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. He says, wherever you go, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now here, here, here's the, here's the story about here's the story. Let me give you a little background about this. Now you guys know the story about the Jordan, right? When they was they was crossing, they was getting ready to cross the Jordan. Let me, let me read it first. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Can I can I go to Joshua three? Joshua three. Joshua three. Let's go to Joshua three. It says, in early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. Don't, don't stay right there. Don't go nowhere. And it says, after three days, the officers went throughout the camp. Now, here's a little background about the Jordan. Now, it says that when the children of Israel got to the Jordan, I mean, when they got to the Jordan, this was before they, you know, they walked around Jericho and did all these things. So they had to cross the Jordan real before they got there. They had to cross the Jordan before they got there. Now we see in the in the uh, when when Moses was leading the children of Israel out of the, out of Egypt, they had to cross the Red Sea. And so when they come to the Red Sea, that's an obstacle in front of them. Then they were surrounded by the desert, which was another obstacle. And then they had Pharaoh's ar army pursuing them, which right. was another obstacle. And that's when God says, "Stand still to see the salvation of the Lord." So He parts the Red Sea, and it says that all the Israelites go across on dry land. So again, we are about to see another miracle because when they come to the Jordan, the Jordan represents two things, just like the Red Sea did. The Jordan represents two things. It represents an obstacle, but it was also a pathway for them to get to that destiny. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes that thing that's in front of us that we look at as an obstacle is also a pathway for us to get to our destiny. 
So that situation that's hindering you, that situation that we look at like this is an uncomfortable situation, all right, all right. God will allow you to have to go through that situation because it's also a pathway to your destiny. Yeah. It's also yeah. a pathway to your Jericho. Yeah. So you can't get to Jericho unless you go through this, what we see as an obstacle, but it's also a pathway for us to get to where we got to go. Mm. Y'all yeah. walking with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's all in how we look at that, that, that situation. It's all about the perception of how we look at it. You, we can look at it like a like like a, a little ant here, or we can look at it like it's a mountain. But whatever it is, it's also a pathway for you to get to your next. So 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 being uncomfortable sometimes will cause us want to step back. But it's necessary. Matter of fact, it's mandatory. Not only necessary, but it's mandatory if you get to your next. Yeah. I do a, I do a, I do a lot of things uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's one of my things. I don't, I don't like being up in front of people. But it comes with the call. Amen. Never have, never like being up in front of people. But it comes with the call. Mm -hmm. I, I can sit in the back of the room and I'll be just fine. Amen. But it comes with the call. It comes with the call. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. It's necessary. Matter of fact, it's mandatory. mandatory. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not only necessary, but it's mandatory. Yes. Some of us right now in a situation that's causing us to be very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's a hindrance. It's an obstacle. But don't go nowhere because it's also a pathway to your next. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pathway to your next. So sometimes you got to get uncomfortable. We get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Next verse. It says, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, we know that's the presence of God, of the Lord your God, and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. So what he's saying, he's saying that you got to follow the presence of God. Of God. Yes, you got to follow the yes. glory of God. Yes. Like, it may be uncomfortable, yes. but you got to follow the presence of God. You got to follow the glory of God. And in that verse, it said it said that they camped right there at the obstacle. They camped right there, it said, for about three days. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand that when the situation, and that's what happens a lot of times, situation or uh, hardship or those things uh, come about, we, 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 make a, we make a house right there. <laughs> Now it said that they were passing through. Yeah, they were yeah. passing yeah. through. They didn't. They didn't stay in the situation. They were simply was passing, passing through, through the situation because they know that that wasn't their destiny. Yes, yes. It says then you will know which way to go. You will know which way to go, and you just follow the Lord. You follow the presence of God, the glory of God. It says you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Wow! wow. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah, since, you, since you've never been this way before, all of us are going to do some things that we've never done before. Mm -hmm. All of us are going to experience some situations that we never felt before. All of us are going to feel, feel, experience some feelings or some emotions that we never felt before. And we, we, we don't know how to maneuver through those things. And if we're not careful, it will cause us to step back from the very thing that God has us to go through because it's a pathway to get to your Jericho. It's a pathway for you to get to your next. It's a pathway for you to get to your destiny. So it says that that's the nugget. So 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 if you you come up with into a situation or to something that you you hadn't felt before or you don't know the way to go, it says just follow the glory of God, follow the presence of God. And, and it'll be made, and that way it'll be made right. It says, but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark, and do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. So he says, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. So Joshua says, hey, set yourself apart. 
That means sometimes we gotta, we gotta, when, when, when something going on that we don't understand, we gotta get in our prayer, prayer clause. We gotta get away from all the noise. Right, we gotta yeah, get yeah. away from all the stuff. Yeah, we right. just gotta get in. We just gotta hear. We gotta cut all the, the voices out in our head. E even we, hey, we gotta get past us sometimes. Right. Yeah, 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 we gotta get past yeah. us. Amen. Yeah, and, and, and just and just get into a place where we set ourselves apart. And we just get before God. We just tell God, God, it's uncomfortable. I don't like it. But I know if you allow it, mm -hmm. if you allow it, mm -hmm. if you allow it, then it must be some good that's going to come out of it. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? It must gonna be some good. It must be some good that comes out of it if you allow it. Because that's why he says in Romans 8, he says, all things work together for the good for those that love the Lord. Love so it, it's going to work out no matter how ugly, bad, whatever the situation is. God is going to get the glory out of yes. it some kind of way. Yes. Some kind of way. Yes. Some kind of way he's going to get the glory out of it. So he says, this is how you will know that the living God is among you. And all, and, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Havites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. They had a lot of enemies, didn't they? <laughs> he says, See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now, now look at this one. Now, this, this, this one is important right here because God. God tells the people of Israel, he says, tell the children of Israel, like, like, I'm giving you all this land. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm giving you all these all this land, but there's still enemies in the land. Mm -hmm. There's still chaos in the yes, land. Yes, yes, there, yes. There's, there's still stuff in the land mm -hmm. that you gotta go get. You gotta go fight. Mm, wow. See, sometimes we think just because God gives us a promise that it's it's, it's our own good door. We we good. We can just sit back and cross our legs and just watch it fall out this guy. Manna, manna ain't falling out the sky anymore. God, God, God will give it to you. He says, now you gotta go take it. It's yours, but you gotta go get it. Yes. And sometimes God does that to us, tells us, hey, that's yours. That thing you've been praying for is yours. It's yours. You just gotta go get it. And you got to cross the Jordan, that, that place of being uncomfortable. Mm. But it's a pathway to your destiny. You got to cross that thing and get what's yours. Mm. You got to. And, and, and he said, but, but it's, it's Canaanites in the land. It's enemies in that land. It's, 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 it's chaos in that land. It's, it's all these things that's hindering you from receiving the promise. It's, it's out there. But it's yours. You just got to go get it. And the thing about it is God promised them that and God can't lie. So whatever he promised you, if it's obstacles in your way, those obstacles have to be moved. Mm -hmm. If the promise is on the other side of it. Right. Mm. If it's on the other side of it, it's it's not uh uh God, please please move this or whatever. It has to, it has to move. We just gotta continue to move forward. So he's saying all the enemies, everything that's hindering you, everything that's holding you back, all the chaos, all the fear, all the doubt, all the disbelief, you, you fill in the blank. Whatever it is that's keeping you from entering and receiving the promises of God. Whatever it is. He says, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. So he's saying the presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, will walk into that situation and go before you. Again, the Jordan represented a place. It was, it was, it was an obstacle. Mm -hmm. It was something that was holding the people of God back from receiving the promise. But he said that his glory, his presence will always go before you right into that place, will lead you in that place, and will lead you through that place so you can get to your promise. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So let me look at this one. Let me look at this one. We got five minutes. Five minutes. Here's, here's, and here's what we have to do. A lot of times when we 
we're going through things. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There's no no new temptation that is known to man. There's no new situations that come up that that we that somebody else hadn't gone through. And so when that happens, situations, circumstances come up, we got to look back sometime, look at the patterns of God. Mm-hmm. Like, like. God, I'm, I'm right here. I may have never faced this situation before, but you brought me through some mighty hard places yes. before. So yes. just like you brought me through these places, yes. you're going to bring me through yes. this as well. Thank you, God. Yeah, you're going to bring you. you I, I know that you can. I know that you will yes. bring me through this one just like you brought me through those. So here's what. But so Joshua, so Joshua tells the people on throughout scripture, he says, now, when you go through the Jordan, when you walk through the Jordan, he says, he tells uh, tell the people, I want you to pick up 12 stones out the middle of the river. He says, because that's going to be a memorial. Mm-hmm. Meaning that, 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 that you, you guys know what a memorial is, something that was, that, that's, that's, that's dead. Now, you, you, you got a memorial in remembrance of it. And that's what God uh, wants us to do. We go through situations, circumstances. He says, look back and see how I delivered you before. Yes. Look how I brought you out of that situation. Yes. Look how I brought you through that situation. And so, it, it, we, don't, we don't even see a victory right here. Just look back on the patterns of God. Yes. How he conquered that for you. How he brought us through that. How he made a way right here. How he made the difference in our time of lack. Because yes. that's what yes. he will do. Whatever there is like God will always make, make up the difference. difference. Yes. He will always make up the difference. Thank you, Father. So in Joshua 3, uh, verse 10, it says, that I'll read this. It says, uh, Joshua 3, verse 10. You got that? It says, this is how... I'm sorry, this is how you know that the Lord living God is among you. He will drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, Hevites, Perizzites, Gergesites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the uh, ahead of you. He says, Now then, choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, it says, Its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in heap. I was thinking about this and just imagine this. It says that soon as soon as soon as you step soon as the, the priest step foot in the Jordan, it says that the waters will be cut off. Mm. As soon as the priest step foot in the Jordan, it says that the waters will be cut off. And I was reminded of that. So, so like like even with us that sometimes when it seems like things are just just, just flowing wrong in our life and, and those things are just flowing and they're hindering us from, from going across and getting to our destiny. God says just as soon as we put a praise on it, as soon as the uh, priest step in, as soon as we step our foot in that situation, it says that the waters will cut off. Mm. So, so, so God wants to cut some situations off in our life that has been hindering us from getting to the promise. He wants to cut some things off, but we can't. We we can't be not. We we can't be afraid to step in that situation because God won't move until we move. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times we say we're waiting on God, but God, we're not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. God moves when you move. Whenever, whenever you step out on faith, God is already already out there waiting on you. The promises are already there waiting on you. The miracles are already out there waiting on you. Mm. See, you don't you don't you don't need faith where you are. You're already in the situation. Right. Man. You right. you you don't you but faith when you step out on faith, then that's when God can do his greatest work. When you step out, when you move forward, when you step into the joy. And watch what happened. That's I, I say it all the time. Chaos is 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 fertile place for God to do miracles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chaos is God. God did God. God didn't do miracles in, when when things was all good. It was right in the middle of chaos when circumstances, when bad situations were going on. That's the time when God does miracles. Now I ain't, I ain't wishing no no bad look come on or me or none of you guys. But but just know that. When situation when things come up, that that's 
an area where God can step in and do some amazing things. So a lot of times, like I said, we got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Growth and comfort don't live in the same house. It can't live in the same house. Mm. It, it can't live in the same house. And we asking for next, we're looking for next. It's going to cause us to be very uncomfortable. Yes. It's, it's, it's going to challenge us. Yes. It's going to challenge us. But doing that challenge, that's where we grow. That's where faith kicks in and, and takes us to that next level. God wants to cut some things off in our life. Those things that have been hindering us. Remember, guys, when you come to your Jordan, it may be an obstacle, but it's also a pathway for us to get to our next. Amen. 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 Stay focused and do all these things. A lot of us are at that at that Jordan right now. A lot of us are at that Jordan. In some area of our life, all of us are at a at our Jordan. And it's an obstacle. It's standing in the way of us receiving the promise and walking into our destiny. But I'm declaring and decreeing that it's also that you're reminded that it's also a pathway to your destiny as well. And as you begin to step foot in that Jordan, that thing that was flowing, that was causing you to uh, uh, hindering you, is going to be cut off. It's going to be cut off, where you can walk through and get to the promise. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, oh God, that you go before us in every situation in the, in the name of Jesus. That everything that may try to hinder us from receiving the promise, oh God, that your glory goes before us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your precious Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. Thank you, oh God, that you fight our battles in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we look to our next, oh God, we should not be hindered by anything, oh God, because you have made us great and precious promises in the name of Jesus. Lord, and I'm declaring and decreeing that each and every one of us will receive everything that you have promised us in this season in the name of Jesus. Lord, we won't let anything from hindering us from receiving it, oh God. Not even ourselves, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for your peace in this season. Thank you for victory in this season. And we love you. And we honor you. And we thank you most of all, Lord God, for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.